What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because in this video I'm gonna be showing you guys some PK test hands. Now if you guys haven't seen in the recent videos, I did a PK combo video where I explained the combos, I did a PK deck profile and showed off how the deck looks, and in today's video we're gonna be doing test hands and I'm gonna be showing you guys how this deck can put up seven disruptions. Not four, not five, not six, but seven disruptions. It's crazy. I can't believe this deck can do things like this. I'm super excited to show it off to you guys. I don't want to keep you guys here for too long, but make sure to like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy the content. We're really close to 5,000. Let's make it happen. I believe in every single one of you. And with that, onto the video. So here we're going to start things off and I just really wanted to show you guys how crazy this deck can be. Of course, here we opened a pretty cracked hand, I'm not going to lie to you. We have the Torn Scales, we have multiple extenders here, and we have a Gloves that we can pitch off of the Torn Scales, so we're in such a good position here. But I just want to show you like what this deck and how many like disruptions this deck can put up. So I'm just going to let this play out, I'm just going to talk. Here we see that our opponent has no disruptions, which is the best part, because this is really what I wanted to show you guys what the deck can do and how it can combo. But when I was playing this deck, because I'm not a big combo player, I like to play more mid-range decks, but when I was playing this deck, I was like, bro, this deck is so fun. Just the amount of things it has access to is insane. Like, you guys are going to see, like, look how many monsters I'm putting up on board. With the Levy, now we have the IP here, and then uh, this is going to search the Fog Blade. We're having double Fog Blade set here, which is insane. We're also going to have an Averte and an IP, so this is crazy, because what makes this board insane is the fact that you have one disruption with the dpe that's a pop you have two more disruptions with ip mascarina because most of the time what i like to do is i like to make apollo apollo has two negates so there's three disruptions right there and in this case we had double fog blade so we're putting up five disruptions literally five disruptions just like that now i'm gonna be honest with you we don't have any monster protection at this point so this is where you guys might be looking at it and like laugh because a simple regeki funny enough breaks this board now, I will say, though, because of the IP into Apollo, Apollo is safe, which is nice, and DPE was destroyed by card effect, so DPE will still get its effect off to come back. And here, look, it's just too much, right? So at this point, he's just going to scoop it up. Of course, he's playing Blue Eyes. It's, it, it bricks, right? The King of D, I don't think you want to be playing this actually in Blue Eyes anyways, but I just wanted to show you guys what kind of board this deck can put up. Now, another thing that I will mention, and you guys will probably see this in the next combo, is DPE actually protects Apollo in multiple ways. Again, I'm going to explain it more later. But just the fact that you can put up five disruptions just like that, plus our graveyard at this point, which I can't show you, but the graveyard at this point is loaded for next turn. So that's insane to me, the fact that you can full combo and still have resources for future turns. That, that's kind of crazy. Plus, I still have another extender here. So anything I draw into, really, I just win. So here we have another replay that I wanted to show you guys, and this hand doesn't look as great. Of course, you still have an extender, you still have a starter, and that's all this deck needs. If you start off with an extender and a starter, you're going off, okay? So I just want to show you what this deck can do. So like, literally tour guide, just you're going to do standard BA combos here just to get level 3s out on the board. You know, it's, it's literally level 3, rank 3 turbo, this deck. So here you guys are going to see, I'm just going to go to the Silent Boots, search a Fog Blade. Honestly though, at this point, I should have maybe searched a... Uh, 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 not a Bardiche, a Brigadine to get an extra summon, but that's fine because here we're still ending on a very similar board as the last one where we ended on the Verte, the IP, and the DPE. Of course, we didn't end on the Rusty, but that's fine because we already opened a Knight's Wing and then we also searched the Fog Blade, so this is fine. But look at this board. So at this point, you have, once you set these cards, like this is your end board. Your end board is Imperm Disruption, you have a Fog Blade Disruption, you have an IP into an Apollo, so that's two more disruptions, so that's four at that point. You could also go technically IP into Unicorn, which is another disruption if you had like, if you wanted to do it that way, but IP if you go into Apollo, that's two disruptions. So, so far we're at four, and we have DP. We're putting up five disruptions with this board, okay? So you guys are going to see here, he's just going to, he's not going to be able to play this through, because you just have too much going on for you at this point. So here I'm just going to IP real quick before he gets any monsters on the field so that I have my Apollo negates live. Here I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants. And again, people forget that DPE has another effect where your opponent's monsters lose attack for each hero in the graveyard. So all of these are lower attack, which is really nice because again, when you do the IP Verte play, what happens is when you're making your Apollo, Apollo's only usually going to have two negates. 
And that's the great thing about this is because a lot of people will just normal summon a monster that's like 1800, whatever, and try to get out the Apollo. But now with DPE, DPE is also kind of like protection in a way where your opponent's monsters can't just attack over Apollo anymore. So that's why I really like the DPE in this deck. And I mean, obviously we know how good DPE is in this deck. I don't know why I said it like, that's why I like it. That's why everyone likes it. But it's just another thing that a lot of people don't consider is the fact that you're literally protecting the Apollo just by having DPE on the field, right? Even without using the pop effect, right? Here we're going to see, I'm just going to imprim him here, you know, like at this point he can't really do anything i'm gonna dpe pop the gear gigant so he can't search okay dpe is obviously gonna activate to get itself back here i'm gonna negate the monster effect the special summon and like at this point you think or he thinks at least he's gonna go battle into ruin force now ruin force has a really cool effect that i actually didn't read and this is my misplay that i'm gonna show you guys here is during the you guys can't see also i should say you guys can't see because of my face cam but during the battle phase when your opponent activates a card ruin force can uh, activate where you pay half your life point and negate it so it's kind of like a solemn judgment but i didn't realize that so what i should have done is before he went to the battle phase i should have fog bladed so here i had to do things a little bit differently i had to go phantom knight's wing to bait out the negate and then once i baited out the negate then i could use the fog blade so this is kind of me misplaying but me also fixing up the misplay if that makes sense right so yeah don't do what i did read read your opponent's cards first because if you do that or if i did that at least i would just fog blade in the in the main phase and he would never be able to negate anyway so i kind of have to waste the card there dpe comes back here now at this point i think when i was doing the replays i had forgotten to use the celestial celestial of course would have gotten you a draw too but that's perfectly fine here he used half his life points with the room force so all i have to do here is i didn't know what his back row were of course here we can see his judgment but it's perfectly fine he's gonna judgment here and then now it just makes him really susceptible to losing to something just like popping a dpe and then i'm just gonna go from there right i'm gonna pop the fog blade pop the monster then I'm going to negate his effect. And he's only at 2,000 life points because of the judgment and stuff. So now I just attack for game. So I just wanted to show you guys that this deck is so... Even though it's a combo deck, it's not one of... So I just wanted to show you guys that the, even though this is a combo deck, it is one of those decks that actually resources really well and a lot better than other combo decks. That's why I really like this deck. And I wanted to show you, even through my misplay, you can make some crazy boards. Again, we put up five disruptions on our first turn. That's insane to me. Okay, for our last test hand slash combo here, I really want to show you guys how good this deck is because you're really going off of just one card. The one tour guide. You guys can see the rest of the hand is not going to do anything for us. Fusion Destiny isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. Opening it is not horrible, but I'm going to show you guys how you can do a full combo with just one tour guide without even using the Fusion Destiny and you guys are going to see where it's going to go. Literally seven disruptions. We're putting up seven disruptions in this combo, okay? So I'm just going to let this play out. You guys are going to see here just the tour guide alone being able to make Chiribini, summoning the Graph, or not summoning the Graph, summoning the Seer with the Graph effect, sending the, uh, not the Cloak, yeah, the Cloak, yeah, the Cloak. We're sending the Cloak with the Chiribini, because Chiribini can send any level 3, right? Cloak is going to search our boots, and now this is what's important, is because we have no extenders in our hand originally, so we actually need to search the extender. So how we're going to do that is obviously we're going to search the boots, we're going to make the Bardiche. Now we have to make the Bardiche, of course, so that we can summon the boots. Also, with Seer, we're going to be summoning Chiribini back because we don't want, you know, our Graph or our Seer to die here. So we are going to be summoning the Chiribini back. And you guys are going to see here how just one card gets you to seven disruptions. Really, it doesn't get you to seven disruptions, though. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to clickbait you guys. It really doesn't get you technically to seven disruptions. It's because we opened other disruptions in our hand that we get to seven. But technically, we're putting up seven disruptions, okay? This by itself technically puts up four. So tour guide by itself is going to put up four disruptions and then the other three was just in our hand already. But here we actually have to go to the Brigadine because we need an extra extender on top of the Silent Boots. So here you guys are going to see Silent Boots Brigadine. We're going to go IP like standard. We're going to go Silent Boots effect and we're going to dump or we're going to add the Fog Blade I should say. Torn Scales is going to come back here now. This is what's interesting. So Torn Scales actually because we have the Fusion Destiny already in hand, we could potentially just go and straight up activate Fusion Destiny and then just end our turn with the dpe but i don't like to do that because what we actually end up doing is we want to set up our graveyard for the next turn so how are we going to do that we're going to go torn scales effect pitch the uh, fusion destiny to send a gloves now gloves is going to help us set up for next turn because we can send a trap a trap can summon back from the graveyard etc etc right so there we're doing that we're going to end on the verite still verite is going to send fusion destiny same thing send the celestial send the dasher and make the dpe so at this point we have one disruption with the dpe and we have two more with Apollo. When you make IP and Verite into Apollo, that's going to be two more disruptions. So right there, we have three disruptions just on its own, okay? Obviously, the fourth disruption, like I said, is the Fog Blade. That's Tour Guide is four disruptions just right there. Look at this. We have a Call By, a Forbidden Chalice, and an Imperm. 
Seven disruptions, bro. Seven disruptions, bro. Literally one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven with the Apollo. That's insane to me. Now, I'm not gonna lie, okay? I'll, I'll just, <laughs> you guys can meme me all you want. Yes, okay, we get it. This loses to Nibiru. The combo loses to Nibiru. If you guys are gonna comment down below and say, haha, Nibiru sucks. Whatever, I get it, okay? First of all, we open Fusion Destiny anyway, so even if we did get Nibiru, I would just go Fusion Destiny end on the DP anyways. But I just wanna say that, like, this guy also happened to go second and happened to open Feather Zuster and Twin Twister. Kinda sucks, I won't lie. It was very unlucky. But in any other game state and in any other situation, your opponent opening the Harpies a one of harpies or the twin twister and wanting to go second is not that like likely you know not a lot of people are maining twin twister not a lot of people are maining harpies feather duster maybe the decks that want to go second but generally not really so here we're going to go into apollo and this is again like i'm just going to count it for you guys again one two three four five six seven literally seven disruptions now okay we lost four of them because of harpies feather duster sure you know what you guys can meme me all you want but i just wanted to show you guys the potential and how strong this deck really is so here he's going to boost up. I'm just going to go DPE effect. Perfectly fine. Um, doesn't really matter what he does from here because he, even though he's at AK still, he literally scoops because even if with the judgment, right, the DPE is going to come back and I'm literally just going to be able to attack. And I don't even know what I'm going to draw into at this point. The, the top deck would be Kage Mucha Knight, which I guess normal summoning it wouldn't really do much. But we have Rusty to send on our, tur on our turn again and we're going to set up a full nother board. So this is literally just OTK on its own and I wanted to show you guys how powerful just one tour guide can be. But, like, okay, don't meme me with the Harpy's Feather Duster. It won't happen too often, I promise. But that's crazy. Seven disruptions with one card? That's, that's kind of nasty. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I understand that when you guys watch some of these combos, you guys might be like, Yo, but you just got blown out by a Harpy's Feather Duster, or this loses to Nibiru. Like, I get it. I know those are the real things, and I know those are real cards, but I wanted to show you the potential that this deck has, and how just how far it can go, right? And it's pretty crazy that it can even go this far. But thank you guys all for watching. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Expect a lot of content coming soon. I've been doing so much recently. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. And with that, it's Fanko signing so out. Peace.